Welcome to Ukulele Anatomy. First off, you'll notice that I'm using the instrument's traditional pronunciation, ukulele. Though I often slip back and forth between that and ukulele, the way it's most often pronounced in my area. Learning the ukulele requires that we have some common reference to refer to the various parts of the instrument. So, let's go over the basic parts every student needs to know. The body of the ukulele encompasses the entire sound box area of the instrument. This area could be exploded into many different pieces, but body is sufficient as a reference to the general area. The neck is made primarily of two pieces, the neck itself, which you can't see in this diagram, and the fretboard. The fretboard is usually a piece of dark hardwood glued on top of the neck. Fret wires, represented by the white lines crisscrossing the length of the neck, are inlaid into the fretboard. The headstock of the instrument, besides housing the tuners, gives an important frame of reference. It might better have been named the foot of the instrument, as we will refer to movements toward the headstock as down and movements toward the body as up. The tuners are where the strings are first attached to the instrument. We'll talk more about tuning later. The strings travel up the instrument from the tuners through grooves carved into the nut, a piece of bone or hard plastic that keeps the strings from resting on the fret wires. The strings continue to travel over the frets toward the body of the instrument. Note, frets do not equal the fret wires we've already discussed. When you're asked to fret a string, you place your finger next to the wire, not on it. Frets can be thought of as the space right below a fret wire. To help you keep track of where your fingers are, there are fret markers. Usually these dots are placed on your fretboard at the 5th, 7th, 10th, and 12th frets. Concert and tenor sized ukuleles may have a few more fret markers as they have longer necks, even though they are tuned exactly the same as a soprano ukulele. The strings continue their journey over the sound hole, another important positional frame of reference when we get to finger picking later on, and over the saddle where they are tied to the bridge. The bridge is a piece of hardwood that is glued to the body. The saddle is a piece of bone or hard plastic that fits into a groove on the bridge, but is not glued to it. This makes it possible to adjust the saddle's height to lower the strings closer to the fretboard, if needed. Occasionally, you'll find ukuleles where the saddle has been lost, probably when someone changed the strings. The saddle can be replaced by a luthier if you find one in this condition. Finally, let's talk about string numbers. As we'll be referring to the strings by number rather than by note name when we start making chords with the fingers of our left hand. The string lowest to the ground is string number one. An easy way to remember this is by thinking of the rungs of a ladder. The first step of a ladder is the one lowest to the ground. String two, three, and four follow upwards. Beyond the ukulele's anatomy, we need to talk a bit about our own in regards to finger numbering. This is a different numbering system than is used with piano, so if you've played piano, forget what you know for a minute. Generally, with the ukulele, the right hand is used as the strumming finger-picking hand, and the left hand is the fretting hand. When fretting, we'll number the index finger as finger number one, the middle as two, the ring as three, and the pinky as four. The thumb does not get a number as it rests behind the neck and supports the instrument. Now that you know your ukulele anatomy and can interpret instructions like place your third finger on the third fret of the first string, now use your thumb on your strumming hand to brush across the strings where the neck meets the body of the instrument. And as long as you're in tune, you will have just played a C chord, which takes us to the subject of tuning.